Today I'm going to be talking about 10 privacy tools that every single one of you should be using right now if you use the internet. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm just going to jump right in here on Privacy X. So today in Operation Core 10, we're going to go in for the win. All right, so number one is Hunix. I've talked about Hunix a lot. I've done tutorials on Hunix. Very important that you separate yourself from your machine, your ISP, and frankly, with all of the different companies and government organizations scraping and scanning your data 24-7, 365, whether it's your emails, whether it's social media, whether it's your instant messages, whether it's your text, every little thing you do, every search you make, well, Hunix is going to help you with that. If you want to upgrade from Hunix a little bit, you can use Cubes, which Cubes is one that I use a lot. But Hunix or Cubes, I highly recommend you get into the fold immediately. Number two. You know, with everyone running online businesses, I've been working for myself full-time on the internet since about 2010, but a lot of people have been doing this for a long time, and I will tell you that I used to use a lot of the crappy hosting services, the GoDaddy's, the Namecheap's, there's all these different products out there, and the problem is they're just giant databases that are for sale. So 1984 hosting is one that I highly recommend. It is located in Iceland, which you know that Iceland is probably the best place for the internet. I've done dedicated videos on Iceland and how valuable that place is. And I do highly recommend 1984 hosting. So if you have a website, even if it's on one of these platforms like WordPress or Shopify or, you know, one of these other word, you know, throw up a website platform, at least do yourself a favor and get your domain on 1984. And then eventually if you self-host it, 1984 is the best option, less your own server, but I know that most people don't actually do that. So that's what I would recommend. Priv MX. Now, here's the thing. Talking about small businesses, a lot of people actually work for themselves with a small team. Priv MX is actually what I use here at Privacy X and what a lot of people use because it is encrypted. Think of like, um, think of Slack, right? Think of like a, a team manager. There's a lot of great team managers out there, but the problem is again, with these closed source data mining companies and data sharing companies, you don't want all of your work, all of your information, all of your communications in a place like that. So PrivMX is a great option and it is encrypted between you and your other team members. So I highly recommend that. It's what I use. In fact, frankly, everything I'm recommending on here is what I use. I'm not backed or endorsed by any of these companies. I've just been a, a customer slash user of these for a long, long time in most cases. So Crypti, I got four kids, man. I got a lot of pictures. And if you're gonna send pictures, Crypti is a great option because it's end-to-end -end encrypted between you and the receivers. So they cannot be they cannot be received. And here's the thing with pictures, what a lot of you guys don't seem to understand, what a lot of people don't understand in general is metadata when it comes to pictures is some of the most valuable golden information that a marketer or a government or in any kind of agency scraping system could get is the metadata. The picture of you and your, and your daughter catching a fish, well, that's great, that's awesome. But the reality is the metadata in that picture is like a treasure map to where you were, what you were using, what devices you were on, and then the devices geolocate, GPS. Like, it is shocking how much information can be in a simple picture. Crypti can solve a lot of that because the end-to-end -end encryption. Now, I've talked about metadata scraping and, and, and metadata removal and a lot of things like that that are a little bit more advanced in the past on this channel. I know a lot of times those videos don't do so well and it goes over most people's head because they're like, dude, isn't there something I could just plug into? Well, unfortunately, it's, it's, it's designed on purpose to not be that simple. So things like Crypti will help if you don't want to get into the hard code and you don't want to have to kind of restructure your, your photo algorithm, if you will, on how to process these things. Crypti is a great option. And again, end-to-end -end encryption is kind of the name of the game when we're talking about everything. If you take nothing else from this video, whenever you're looking for a product, is it open source and is it end-to-end -end encrypted? Now, there are some scenarios where products can't be open source or end-to-end -end encrypted depending upon what we're talking about. But in most scenarios, those should be two things you're looking at. Open source, end-to-end -end encrypted. If not, why? Is it decentralized? If not, why? Is it peer-to-peer? -peer? If not, why? Right? You need to be asking these questions and looking at these things whenever you're looking at a product. The Googles of the world, the Apples of the world, the Amazons of the world, the Microsofts of the world, clearly they don't fall under any of these boxes. They're just powerhouse corporations that dominate. Sometimes you fall for you know, the, the convenience factor and that's what they're selling but there's a giant cost and that cost is gonna come more evident. Uh, the cost is basically gonna be in your day-to-day -day life. And it's gonna be more evident when 
you see the new social credit score systems that are coming out in Europe and the United States, and when you see the new uh, CBDC systems that are, that are being broke down, I talked about this in a recent video, the CBDCs. I mean, the, the CBDC laws in Europe are horrible. The Crypto Act in the United States is horrible. A lot of people got them confused. I got a few comments saying, oh, are you talking about the Europe one? No, there's one in Europe, there's one in the US, there's kind of one in Australia. A lot of people are really going off the deep end on some of this stuff. So this is why these tools are very important to keep yourself out of this database, this system, right? Because there, there's a lot of individuals and entities going for this overall system for these CBDCs. And that's where this data and this information becomes super valuable. You don't want to partake, in my opinion. Now, if you do, go nuts, but you're insane. So the next one is internet send. Now, for a lot of you guys, if you are sending files, a lot of people are using cloud services. A lot of people are using all kinds of tools you really shouldn't use because again, you're giving a copy of all these things. Like I know people who save their taxes on Google Drive. Wow. So the, the reality is you really wanna be careful what you do with your documents and your files because you think it's just between you and a cloud. Guys, there's no such thing as a cloud. It's just a bank of servers. So um, Internet Send is a great option in my opinion. Again, it is audited by an actual open source auditor it is encrypted, and there's no KYC. It, is it has been crazy how many companies are starting to get on KYC. I did a tier list video here recently about VPNs, and it was shocking how many VPNs want to do KYC. Why would you do KYC at a VPN? Why would you do KYC at a file sharing service? But a lot of these are actually KYC in these things because they're trying to take control of the internet. This is why we need decentralized peer-to-peer. -peer. This is why the crypto movement is so powerful, and the blockchain movement, and beyond just crypto and, and digital currency, it's the ability to have control of your data, which is your privacy, which ultimately is your freedom. And it's gonna to lead to whether or not you're free or not in the future. So Internet Send is a great option. I highly recommend you check it out. Next, DNS. Probably one of the most overlooked things that I talk to people about are DNS. People don't realize how DNS works. And I get it, not everyone's an IT guy, not everyone. And, and for IT guys are like to basic elementary stuff. I get it. but. Next DNS will help you out a lot. Looking at your, your machine and looking at your internet and looking at you know, how, you're, how you're sending data to different devices. So your phone, if you have a laptop or you have a, a, maybe you have a desktop, maybe you have a tablet, maybe you have a smart home for some reason. If you do, I hope you configured it yourself and you're not just out there willy nilly. Maybe you've got like well, my digital security cameras, right? I take out the, the GPS chip, I take out um, a lot of the, the homing stuff and a lot of the, uh, the beacons that will signal the, the manufacturer, kind of like what Apple does or what a lot of uh, current auto manufacturers do, right? They have the, those beacons. We gotta, you gotta make sure you're staying away from that stuff. So next DNS is another, it's another tool that's gonna help you greatly and it's really gonna help take your privacy to the next level. If you do these 10 things, in my opinion, you'll be more secure on the internet than 99% of people on the internet. It's gonna help you greatly. Now, sadly, you really need to be 100% secure and that's a lot more in depth, but at least making big steps. Like right now, if you're sitting here and you're on Gmail or you're on Yahoo, I mean, people still use, I get emails from Yahoo every day, I can't believe it, but people still use Yahoo, it's fine. MSN, right, if you're on, if, if you're out there and you're just using all these old school things, you got your Apple phone in your name with an Apple ID in your name, and you got everything linked to your debit card and your bank account. And I know most of you are thinking, well, that's me. That's most people. But these are steps you can take to start taking yourself out of this because it's going to be a very serious problem here in the next couple of years. Right now, the problem's behind the scenes and you don't see it. It's not in your day-to-day -day life. It's not in your face. So keep that in mind. The next one I want to talk about is side shift. Side shift does, does accept Monero. And you actually don't need an account, which is pretty cool. Now, SideShift is interesting because you're talking about swapping different crypto and you're talking about when it comes to crypto and the blockchain, what a lot of people don't understand is how crypto is tracked. From the second it was mined or the second it was created or the second it was originally introduced, each individual piece of each individual currency or each transaction can be tracked at an infinite level. And the problem is from wallet to wallet to wallet. 
And what we're seeing with companies like Ledger, right, make a massive mistake. And I recently did a video on Ledger and talking about what I'm doing. And I've got some updates coming with some uh, crypto options for cold storage and things like that because Ledger made some massive mistakes. But what we're seeing more and more is cold wallets want to do KYC and cold wallets want you to be able to KYC things if you get in and out of it. So again, what they're doing, think of chess, right? Think of a game of chess. They're basically cornering your king. They're kind of putting you in a, in a very tough spot because you can have a trillion dollars in crypto, but with these laws coming in place, if you don't understand how to ghost yourself, if you don't understand how to set yourself up to where it's not in your name, if you don't understand how to get in and out of crypto, then you've got a serious problem, don't you? Because you can't use it. You could have $9 trillion in crypto, but you can't use it. And that's the problem with a lot of these cold wallets. That's the problem with a lot of these things. So people doing OTC or swaps is becoming very, very popular over the counter, which you could do peer to peer. You could do through companies or swapping. Like say I had $100 in Monero and you had $100 in Ethereum and I wanted $100 in Ethereum and we swap, right? So you can, there's different swaps or different things you can do. So side shift is something a lot of you guys should look into. Obviously with Monero and Cake Wallet and a lot of the other different tools and, and resources you can use. It's why I'm such a big fan of Monero. But the reason Monero is not on this list, frankly, is because Monero is like a whole ecosystem. Monero is like a whole thing of its own. And for a lot of people, either way, they're all in on crypto and Monero or they're all out. And I totally get it. Or maybe they kind of dip their toe in with like coin, Coinbase and Bitcoin or, or Ethereum or something. That's fine. There's nothing, it's better than nothing. You just don't want it in your name. Because when when things go supersonic, which again, after the um, legislative recess, because America's, our politicians are always at recess, then uh, all the crypto bills are coming up on the docket in the next couple of months. And then of course the crypto regulations coming and then the average person will only be able to have $1,000 in crypto in, in their name. And that's all you'll be able to do per year. A lot of people ask me, is that lifetime? No, it's per year. It says it in the bill on the United States Congress website. Uh, the bill is over 800 pages. So I know most of you haven't read it. I have, uh, people on my team have, we scrape these things, we go through these things on a regular basis, that's what we do, looking for the pertinent things to, to what we do. So Sideshift is a great option in my opinion. Bitwarden, all of you have tons of passwords, tons, like a crazy amount if you really looked at it. And as you're going through and, and trying to become more private and secure and trying to minimize and bring things in and get rid of old accounts and delete old accounts, you start realizing all these passwords. Well, the thing with Bitwarden is Bitwarden is an incredible password manager. It's one of the only ones I recommend there are a little bit more advanced ones that I do recommend. There's a couple other on the Privacy X website. But Bitwarden is one that I'm confident that your 80-year-old grandma can use. Uh, I'm confident that anybody can use. Don't use things like LastPass. Don't use those kind of closed source options. Uh, the problem with things like that when they've been hacked, the problem with non-encryption, the problem with a lot of these things is when this happens, and it's not if and when. People always talk about something secure. I think the hackers on the internet have proven nothing secure, okay? The federal government has been hacked more times than they're ever going to admit. Every country's been hacked. Every bank has been hacked. Every credit bureau has been hacked. Can we just get over the fact that there's no company, like these people, remember that guy who in those commercials would drive around with his social security on a billboard and lost his whole identity and almost went broke? But he was bragging about how cool his tool was and then he, he they had, you know, every single Internet site is hackable. Everything on the internet is hackable. So encrypting your stuff, being able to take your packets out of transmission. This is why when we talk about you know virtual um, virtual private networks and setting up things like cubes, you're basically putting yourself in your own portal. Everything I've talked about on this list is putting yourself in, the, in your own portal. When you look at Web One, Web One was an absolute joke. Web Two is what we're currently in. We're transitioning slowly into Web Three. Web Three is going to be supersonic when it comes to uh, speed and when it comes to amounts of data that can be compressed and packets moved to all these places at lightning speeds. And so encryption is going to become more valuable than ever. Why do you think most major countries are trying to outlaw encryption? Because they can't crack it. In most instances, these encrypted products can't be, can't be cracked by governments or militaries or anybody. And that's the fundamental aspect of this. Now, with the developments of quantum computing, with the developments of, of some of these other technological tools, this is getting more and more difficult, but keep that in mind, encrypting your stuff. So Bitwarden is a great option, in my opinion, as opposed to a lot of these other ones. And the last one I'm gonna put on this list, and it really it should be first, but it's first and last, and I highly recommend it, and that's Movad. Movad is one of the best VPNs. I talked about that in my VPN tier list video, but 
Also, just having a VPN, separating yourself from your ISP, because the one thing I respect about all ISPs is they don't lie. They're honest about the fact that they scrape your data and they sell your data. They don't lie. It's in your contract. It's in all of your contract. You have Comcast, CenturyLink, Quest, uh, any of these companies. It doesn't matter which company you have. It, it could be Starlink. I, I like Starlink. I think Starlink's great. I think it works great. But they're another telecommunications company. They all do this. And I'm fine with that because I know they do it. And so I set up the tools available for them to have nothing to scrape, for them to have no data, no information. And that's why you need to have a VPN. And in my opinion, Mulvad is one of the best. I talk about my opinions in my, my recent cheerless video that I just did a couple of videos ago. I highly recommend you check that out and understand why you need a VPN. In my opinion, if you don't want one, don't get one. But for the money you spend on a VPN, which is next to nothing comparatively to the the priceless data and information you're giving out on a daily basis. So anyway, guys, that's it. That's the whole list. 10 things that I recommend every single one of you have if you're going to be on the internet in any way, shape, or form, or if you're going to be on a technological device, because this is getting very, very important. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate you this video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, put out new content all the time here on Privacy and I'll see you guys in the next video.